friends and colleagues, um, we will start now in the interest of time, although lots of people are still joining. Uh, my name is Uta Lehmann and I'm the director of the School of Public Health. Um, welcome to the 2020 celebration of the Jake Scalpel Award. Um, it is a um, delayed ceremony because when we talked about this last year, we still were hoping that by this time this year, we might be able to have a face-to-face -face event, um, but yeah, um, fate told us differently. I want to uh, start with just a few housekeeping rules. Um, you will see that we deliberately um, that we deliberately con are conducting this event as a Zoom meeting rather than a Zoom uh, webinar. The difference between the two is that in meeting mode, we can all see each other and communicate with each other uh, rather than only being able to see the speaker. Um, for me, this is a really important part of retaining a sense of community. I always find webinars uh, very alienating for that reason when one can't see who else is part of this event. And I think this is really important in these times when it uh, even if it comes at the expense of maybe a little bit of disruption if people accidentally un unmute yourself uh, themselves or something like that. So um, just in terms of housekeeping, we will be recording the event. We have started recording the event. Please let us know if you would li not like to be recorded and we will then take note of that when we publish the event. Please mute yourself unless you're speaking. We are asking everybody who is speaking, if possible, to turn on their cameras. Um, so that we can see you. Um, we would invite you to post messages to Junita in the chat uh, function. Um, we will record those too. And we are hoping that we will have the opportunity for participants to raise some questions or contribute um, after our awardees um, speech. Um, secondly, I would like to take a moment to recognize the um, tumultuous and traumatic times we live in. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge the um, incredible work that our health workers, managers, policymakers have been doing over the past year and a half and continue to do in looking after all those who are sick and to do everything they can to protect us from disease, both through prevention and now luckily increasingly through vaccination. Um, this includes many of those who are present today and it includes the awardee we are celebrating this evening. So a big thank you and we salute you all. I want to remember the health workers, colleagues, friends and family uh, we have lost in the pandemic. I want to be, us to be aware of the millions in the country who have known hunger and incredible hard, hardship in the past period. And I want to make sure that as we gather tonight, we also remember the many, many people across the country who have lost their livelihoods and some even their lives and to live in uncertainty and fear because of the unrest engulfing the country at the moment. So I would like to ask for a moment's silence to think of all of those who are mourning, in need, or in fear tonight. Thank you. And now I would like to extend a few welcomes, um, particular welcome to the Helber family. Uh, Jake's wife, Phoebe, unfortunately cannot be with us this evening, but we send her warm regards um, from here by her son, Heinrich, who is with us. I want to wel welcome Diana Yach from the Mauerberger Foundation. Um, I want to welcome our rector, Professor Tyron Pretorius, our alumni, friends and colleagues, uh, several awardees who I believe are also online this evening. I want to welcome colleagues and friends from the Western Cape Department of Health. Um, and most importantly, of course, I want to welcome our awardee, Chief Director in the Western Cape Department of Health, Janita Arendse. Um, before I hand over to the Rector, um, just a few words on the order of play, if you want, on the program for this evening. Um, so we have a few words from the Rector now. We will then have a short video on Jake Scharbel. Um, 
Diana Yach from the Mauerberger Foundation will then introduce the award. Um, Nikki Shea will read the citation for the awardee. We will then have a short video introducing her and then a speech by Janita. Uh, and after that, I'm hoping we will have some time for some question and answers and engagement with amongst all of us and with the awardee. And with that, I would like to hand over to Professor Pretorius, the Rector and Vice Chancellor of the University of the Western Cape. Thank you. So, Rector, if you could unmute yourself. Thank, thank you, uh, Prof. Lehman. I, I did that, and I hope everyone could see me. Yes. Uh, Professor Lehman, Director of the School of Public Health, uh, the uh, Herbal Foundation, and in particular the Herbal family, Ms. Diana Yech from the Mauerberg Foundation, uh, the awardee tonight, Ms. Joanita Aronser, colleagues and students, guests. A very warm welcome to the 2020 Jakes Herbal Award in Public Health, and congratulations to the recipient of the award, Ms. Joanita Aronser, who is the Chief Director, Emergency and Clinical Service and Support in the Western Cape. She also leads the Provincial Project Office Team for the COVID-19 vaccination program. I had prepared uh, for this evening similar remarks uh, uh, to what Prof. Lehman expressed, just pausing to reflect on what we as a country and as a nation goes through. And so, Instead of repeating those sentiments, I will simply say that as a university, we are deeply troubled at where we as a country found, find ourselves, both in terms of the pandemic, as well as the systemic violence that is raging within our country. To the awardee of tonight, Ms. Arnsa. Ms. Arnsa joins an illustrious group of recipients who have been recognized since the award was started in 2012 to honor the legacy of our former rector, Prof. Jake Scherbo, and his commitment to establishing a school of public health that would improve the lives of South Africa. Just thinking about this event and thinking about our country and where we find ourselves right now, I wonder what Jake would have said. Professor Hervo, utterly committed to truth, would perhaps say that we are seeing unfolding in South Africa, the fruits of a country whose transition to democracy has not been complete. He might also say, that those who are and have been in power should be examples of servant leadership and truly commit themselves to be in the service of our people. He might also add that many of our leaders today are unable to be truthful about their actions, face up to it, and admit what it has cost our country. It is for this reason that I find this award so meaningful, because it focuses on UWC alumni who act in the interest of the people whom they serve as they strive to improve the organizations and structures that they lead. Former President Nelson Mandela and Prof. Herbal's former boss, spoke so eloquently at his presidential inauguration about the country that he wished to see. On that occasion, he said, our daily deeds as ordinary South Africans must produce an actual South African reality that will reinforce humanity's belief in justice, strengthen its confidence in the nobility of the human soul, 
and sustain all our hopes for a glorious life. As we stand at a bitter moment in South Africa today, I want to urge Ms. Aronsa and the other South Africans who have received this award in the past to continue what they are doing, use their leadership positions to build strong institutions that will serve ordinary South Africa. On behalf of the University of the West Cape, my warmest congratulations to Ms. Aronson for an award well deserved. Thank you. Thanks so much, Rector. Thank you for these words, um, which I deeply concur with. Um, when Jake Scarville was probably best known to most South Africans as the Director General in the presidency under Nelson Mandela and one of South Africa's great intellectuals and thinkers. And I'm thinking about what he would say about the times now, I think is very pertinent. For us at UWC and in the school particularly, he was most important, his most important role and legacy is of, vice of the vice chancellor who turned UWC from a Bush college and an apartheid institution for so-called coloreds into a vibrant space of engagement and scholarship, an in intellectual home for the left. Uh, he provided visionary leadership and steered UWC for very turbulent, through very turbulent times. And of course, he laid the foundation for the school. I thought it would be good to be reminded of his role. So we put together a short and slightly hand knitted um, video. It wasn't easy to find material on him because it, it, that reflects who he was. He liked to lead from the back. But a short video that reminds us of the man he was. So I will share my screen. Um, Jake Scherbel, described as a humble leader, academic, and businessman of note. His life was celebrated in a variety of ways, which included art, music, literature, and film. A number of debates and lectures were also held throughout the day. Scherbel is known for leading from the back, but well-known photographer Rashid Lombard managed to capture the late professor in critical moments in the volatile 1980s. Out of the vast archives, I tried to find him in certain places. And as you can see, the, he's there, but the caption is about the moment in time. And I think it's so important that these moments only come once. And if it's not captured, it's gone. Uh, that's why I always tell people, use your camera and capture a moment in time, be it of children or family. So, you know, and this is my tribute to him. Um, and from... Um, donating it to his wife, Phoebe, and to the foundation. And this will go into his house in Somerset East. While Gerwel was remembered for his impeccable work in the political realm and in society, to his family, he was a loving husband and father. As my relationship with him, um, our greatest bond was just being able to talk about what was going on in the world and to share life in the context of cricket. I mean, that was the one bond that we shared for most of our lives. Harvel died in November 2012, but his legacy and the immense contribution he played in society lives on. No more to Sarandle, SABC News, Cape Town. Op 5 juni 1987 wordt hij director en fysiekanselier van de Universiteit van de Westkaap. In zijn intrede heeft hij beklemtoon dat die universiteit onder zijn leiding toegewijd zal wees aan die waardes van kritische onrug en gesteldheid. Indien tegenstand hier tegen politisch of ideologisch van aard is, zal hij dit als opvoeder en administrateur met zijn volle hart tegenstaan. De UWK. Zou so een leier in die strijd wordt, 
tegen apartheid. Zijn grootste bijdrage tot die transformatie van Zuid-Afrika was die jaren wat hij aan IWK was. Het is waar die groot of, uh, rol wat hij gespeeld heeft, was daar. Want dit was die begin in, uh, van uh, een proces waarin die universiteit een, een beslissende rol, tot een groot mate een beslissende rol gespeeld heeft in die, uh, die veranderingen wat in Zuid-Afrika plaatsvindt. En daarom was het hij een baie fundamentele rol gespeeld. UWK als etnische universiteit heeft een andere richting ingeslaan als wat die overheden daar die tijd voor de universiteit in gedachten gehad het. Dit zou vernieuwing tafel te brengen. Ik denk mensen de onthou UWK dat was voor die optochten en die studenten opstanden en die meer. Ik denk eindelijk maar meer aan die intellectuele bijdrage wat die universiteit gemaakt heeft. Ik denk het. Um, op een slag in die periode genoemd dat we spraken zien die WK als een en intellectuele home of the left. Die WK was die net de plek waar vrijheid verskans was nie. Ook die plek waar die toekomst beplan is. Je weet wat die intellectuele gesprek was, was, was woelig, het was um, levendig, het was uitdagend. En, uh, ja, die WK was baie beslissen. Een belangrijke stem en een belangrijke rol spelen. Feit is, als je nou maar denkt aan die grondwet na 1990, het ons die vorige gehad om een klomp um, of een hele paar um, struggle intellectuals bij de universiteit te krijgen. Mensen zoals Kader Asman, Albi Sachs, Dalla Omar, Zola Squihia. Een hele pompen daar aan onze Community Law Center komen. Werk, klas en navolging doen. En heel wat van die werk rondom die grondwet is nagedoen en daar uit die WK uitgekomen. Um, so ja, neem ons een baie belangrike rolspeler. So this award honors and recognizes Jack Schauwald's central role in promoting public health practice and his vision for public health and the need for public health training in the, in the early 1990s. As early as November 1991, Jake's and some colleagues published an editorial in the South African Medical Journal at the time when the Kodesa negotiations had, hadn't even begun. Thinking way ahead into a new dispensation, he said, a health service is required to perceive the priority problems and to target resources to deal with these problems in the most effective way. Such a service needs, needs an adequate supply of people with training different from any provided in our training institutions to date. It was this vision which laid the ground for the establishment of the initially tiny public health program, which transformed into the now very well-established School of Public Health. So with this history in mind, it is entirely appropriate that the Jake Scovel Award in Public Health acknowledges graduates of the UWC School of Public Health who have through their work made an impact on public health through professional or academic leadership and innovation. And we are deeply grateful to the Mauerberger Foundation for endowing this award annually since 2013. And I would like to now call uh, on Ms. Diana Yach from the Mauerberger Foundation to introduce the award. Diana, you have to unmute yourself. I'm unmuting myself. Thank you, yes, perfect. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share this celebration. Um, the Moorberger Foundation Fund has a long and warm association with the University of the Western Cape, and in particular with um, Professor Jake Skirwell. Um, and we were very, very, pleased and humbled to be able to support Jake's during his time as rector uh, to be one of the first major donors, along with the Medical Research Council of the School of Public Health in 1992. But our friendship with UWC goes back all the way to 1975, 
when Professor Dick van der Ross was rector, um, and we had the opportunity to support bursaries for dental students. Um, as director, uh, Jake Skirwell was also a director of the Moorberger Foundation Fund, and he played a really important part in our work, as well as inspiring new generations of leaders in so many diverse fields, including public health. But I have a very warm feeling about UWC because in the lead up to the um, democratic elections in 1994, I was based at the, at the Department of Government, working with Jake's, not with Jake's, but with um, Dalla Omar and also Kada Asmal, um, helping to develop peace monitoring and martial training. So um, the focus that has been put today on service the fact that UWC does more than just educate individuals um, in their own select academic area, but actually supports the growth of ethical leaders. And we particularly welcome the growth of such fantastic women leaders who are now more needed than ever before in, in our um, society, in our country. I also want to acknowledge the fantastic work done by all the health workers um, and, and their families um, for enabling them to do this, because a lot of this work has gone probably unnoticed, but if it hadn't have happened, we would be in a worse place. So I just wanted to, to thank them. I think that from the Moorberger Foundation Fund's perspective, um, we have been delighted to be a support um, and investor in the Public Health Award since its inception in 2013. We continue to regard the University of the Western Cape as a pioneer in growing future leaders devoted to advancing human rights, ethics, health, and social justice, all of which align with our core mission. I wanted to just say something in relation to the trauma and the traumatic times we've been through and are continuing to go through today. We at the Moorberger Foundation Fund believe that the future well being of communities will only be secured by strengthening community dialogue and understanding. Working together is in everyone's interest. We have always taken the view that creating inclusive environments in which everyone has an opportunity to reach their dreams are only, only achievable by assisting the least well-off in society, nurturing talent and unleashing innovative spirits in early childhood, as well as high level researchers. We still have a lot to learn when it comes to living together. Um, and we actually need urgently to reconnect with each other because we all live and work in a global village, we are all connected. We need to create opportunities to reconnect with each other, with whom we share a common humanity. And we need to do this in a spirit of generosity and not blame and show that we care. There is nothing worse than empty care. We all know how that feels a distinct lack of sincerity or patronizing at worst. As the chairperson of the Moorberger Foundation Fund, I am humbled by Juanita's achievements and I wish her and her colleagues and her family well as she continues her journey. Thank you all for your service and for being with us today. Thanks so much, Dana. Thanks for these words.
Um, and with that, I would like to now ask my colleague Nikki Shea to read the citation for Junita, please. Thanks, Ota, and greetings to everyone. So, um, <clears throat> Janita grew up in Bontaheerville on the Cape Flats and has been working within the public health system in the Western Cape for 32 years. Um, ha as has been mentioned before, she currently works as the Chief Director of Emergency and Clinical Services Support and leads the Provincial Project Office team for the COVID-19 vac vaccination program. Janita originally trained as a registered nurse, a clinical nurse practitioner, and a nurse educator, and, and in her own words, remains passionate about caring for people and lifelong learning. With a postgraduate diploma in nursing science administration and another in nursing science education, which she received from our colleagues at the University of Stellenbosch, and along with her MPH from UWC, Janita has a unique understanding of what is involved in working on the front line of the South African Public Health Services, both in relation to clinical mentoring and management practice. Her career as a public health practitioner began in 1993, when um, as a newly qualified professional nurse, she joined the staff of the Red Cross um, Children's Hospital. For the first five years, Janita worked as a senior professional nurse, a clinical nurse practitioner and mentor at a district level, where she was based at the Hanover Park Community Health Center. In 1999, Janita joined the Human Resource Development and Training section of the Metro District Health Services, where she developed and facilitated training programs for the Department of Health. Between 2002 and 2015, Janita took an increasing level of public health management responsibility, um, first as an assistant director and then the director of the HAST um, program, the HIV AIDS STI and TB program, and also as a deputy director of comprehensive health programs for Metro District Health Services, um, and then the acting chief director of health programs um, for the province. A long-standing colleague um, and friend, Dr. Jessica Chaliza, who worked closely with Janita during some of, of the HAST and program period, shared her um, shared how extraordinary Janita's work, work ethic was, and of course still is. Jessie said she was always the first at work and the last to leave the office. With back-to-back -back meetings during the day, she would always still catch up on her emails and attend to other work. Um, on her laptop at night. I also realized while working in the HAST unit, the great ability Janita had to build and inspire hardworking teams. Additionally, she has a deep commitment to build communities and to improve the health of these communities, very much like those in which she was raised. In 2015, Janita requested a lateral transfer to take on the position of director in the Northern Tigerberg substructure of the Cape uh, Metro Health District so that she could broaden her experience within the district health system at a senior management level, she, she, um, ref, as she refers to it, and return in a manner of speaking to the complexity of managing people, program and services and the infrastructural and financial resources at the front line. This is the position she held before her current role as Chief Director. Janita obtained her Masters of Public Health from um, the School of Public Health at UWC in 2012. Her mini thesis focused on the development of a tool to evaluate the quality of PMTCT programs offered to um, HIV exposed infants in primary health care uh, facilities in Cape Town. Her supervisor, Associate Professor Vera Scott, a long-standing academic colleague of ours at, at the school, um, and who is now, as many of you know, the City of Cape Town's area manager for Kailicha and the Eastern Sub-District, and I know Vera is with us this evening, said um, <clears throat> of Janita, Janita has demonstrated what can be done when an individual brings passion, commitment, and public health expertise 
to bear in a team environment. At heart, she is a nurse, still motivated by the ethic of compassion that first influenced her career choice. This ethic inspires her vision for what a caring and quality service can be and should be. Her experience working at different levels um, of what a, um, a different levels of the health service has given her a deep understanding of policy and systems um, and a multi-perspective insight into health systems opportunities and challenges. She is fearless in her pursuit of improving health services for all communities. I first started working with Janita in 2002 and I've seen her grow to become a highly respected manager and leader. She is also an excellent researcher, ever keen to learn more and to share that new knowledge. So Janita is currently registered as a PhD candidate with our colleagues at UCT in the School of Family Medicine and Public Health and is using a health policy and systems lens um, to assess the extent of the integration of palliative care services within the health system in, in the Cape Metro District. Many of the comments have, um, that have gone in the chat box have talked about um, the incredible um, role model that you are, Janita, um, of, of a public health, uh, a public servant. And this was um, your commitment and outstanding performance to, to the public service was acknowledged in 2018 when um, Janita received a bronze award for the best public service leader. Uh, and this is an award the province um, gives out, um, or the premier gives out um, and, and shares um, sort of generally with the public to acknowledge outstanding performance um, from public health, uh, public service professionals in the Western Cape government. Um, so um, great leadership, but also I think um, an incredible humbleness and a kindness, which has also come through in some of the comments. Thanks. Thanks so much, Nikki. And um, yes, a true reflection of Janita. Now, we of course, usually we have this event um, live and we would have Janita there with her family and, and um, many others. And we thought because we can't do that this year, we would have um, a little video that introduces Janita and shows her and her family in her environment. Um, and I would li now like to ask uh, Leanne Brady, who produced that little video, to uh, share that with us. There seems to be a problem with my screen sharing, so I hope it works better with when she does it. And we don't have sound. Let me try and, oh, you know what, I'm being silly. Sorry, let's start that again. This should work. way of doing the potato because you make it quarter then it's too small and if you half it then it's like the way we used to do it now that's the easy way for you to pluck it out of the pot as well he says all potatoes is enough yeah. just a little bit more do you want to give it a tomato to make please man? just give it a tomato give me two give me two tomatoes rather i can just add some tomato to that i suppose the thing about growing up in Bonti is that it, it taught me to be so grateful for when you can actually go to the shop and buy it you know, and it's taught me to really appreciate life and to never forget where I've come from. The big thing for me about growing up in Pontiol was community life. Our kitchens were at the back of the house. 
And I remember how you knew exactly what the neighbor was having for supper because you could smell the aroma and vice versa, you know. And the summer market was yes to it. Formerly Bailey, I'm okay for my Astisa. And I can for one, on her fear mirrors, fear the year. This is my friend. We grew up together, we had dreams together, and today she made it. We are so proud of her for what she achieved in life, for what she became. For young girls in Bontivo, it means that if you look at Wani, there can come something good out of Bontivo. <laughs> she come from the Cape Flats. You can't take the Cape Flats out of the people. You can't take it out of Juanita because if you see her, she didn't change. She's still that down to earth girl. <laughs> this is the house that I grew up in. And um, it didn't look like this. It was um, completely open in front. There was no wall. At one point, I remember my dad had this wooden garage with the zinc, you know, sort of on, on top. And uh, we, he would park his car in or he would work from, because he used to fix cars. He first mm. do mechanical work. And then he used to do panel beating. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Um, and, and then, yeah, and that was in like our, our more, more primary school years, yes. I think. Ne? Growing up, I was dependent on the public sector services. I used to walk all the way over the bridge to Bishop Lathis, and that's where I got my health care, my dental care as well. And I suppose receiving that and appreciating that, I just became so determined to want to give back and to want to work on that very system that I was dependent on and to make it even better. The house that I lived in was just the second house from here. And so we literally walked around this corner and over here is the railway line. And so we walked all the way down here uh, to get onto the train, to get to school, we used to run over there, go get two sisters on a Sunday morning. Um, but our parents sort of we went up the stairs and over the bridge and down the stairs the long way. But now it's too much trouble to walk over that way. And then we take a chance over the railway over the line. Railway, and there's a dump that side now. When I did my community nursing, I came to work at the old age home over here. We grew up in very difficult times. Those hardships and what you go through, they can either make you or break you. I remember my grandmother <coughs> used to say, you know, oh, if you get a good job, you go work in a bank, or you work at the post office, or you become a teacher, <laughs> you know, or you become a nurse. Thank you, Nelani. See you, Wayne. <laughs> It all started in 1989 at Tigerberg Hospital. I spent four years there as a student. Then I worked at Red Cross Hospital and then transitioned into the primary health care platform as a clinical nurse. I worked at Hanover Park Day Hospital, um, which was a really tough area to work in, but also a really rewarding space. And from there, I transitioned into training, nursing education for a couple of years, and then into policy writing and program management, which probably spanned about 13 years of my career, of which the last almost six years was um, running the HIV and TB programs for the province. And then I laterally transferred to being the director for the Northern Tigerberg substructure. That was the last five years before I took up the position as chief director, emergency and clinical services support. Hey, Anne-Marie, you good? Awesome, man. See you. Hey, madam, how's it? Good, thank you, man. Sleep like her? Awesome. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Monty. Good? Awesome. And the fortunate thing about me venturing into nursing is that at that time, nursing was sort of like an earn while you learn. And so I could still help to keep food on the table and help to support my family while I was studying nursing. I grew up in the apartheid era. Things were very different then. It was unheard of that a nurse would be appointed as a chief director in the Department of Health, in particular in a, a health service related post nurses weren't maybe given as much scope to think about how things could function differently. Even though nurses ran wards, for example, the doctors still called the shots. 
transitioning out of the clinical practice and moving over into policy development and program management and so on, obviously not caring for patients anymore. I suppose it all just sort of spilled over to the teams that I work with. A strong, resilient public sector service builds that safety net for any person who requires healthcare and having it accessible and um, affordable for them is really what's most important. And I think that's what I was really determined to, to help build. I've been made aware of the fact that it is historic that a nurse has been appointed at this level in the Department of Health. You know, not being a doctor, not being male. And I'm grateful that I'm able to, to do what I can do and being given the opportunity to give back. People often ask me what keeps me going and people often call me a Duracell bunny. Things run at 120 miles per hour. Ah, here we go. Here's Mama's chicken curry. Here's Mama's chicken curry. Okay, when so was angry. I have the support of my husband and my family. When I come home and I look into my kids' eyes, I see what really matters. Thank you very much for a wonderful video. And without further ado, um, I will now hand the, the microphone and the word to the awardee, Ms. Janita Aronson, please. Um, yeah, good uh, evening, everybody. And um, uh, what a privilege and what an honor to be here this evening. I must say that um, that video really put a smile to my dial seeing, seeing it all and um, uh, such a lot of fond memories of where I grew up as well and um, proud to be from. So um, if you'll allow me a moment, I just want to share my screen with you. Thanks, we can see it. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, perfect. Just see, all right. So, um, so thank you. Um, first and foremost, um, I want to say thank you to the Jake Scherbo family, um, to UWC School of Public Health and UWC as a whole as an institution and the Marlberger Foundation for this opportunity. I am I'm equally honored and humbled uh, to be here and to receive this award. Um, so maybe just a bit about, um, sorry, I'm be between two screens, maybe just a little bit about, um, about myself. I think you've seen quite a bit of that and, um, and where I come from. And uh, um, you've seen the video clip and it's needless to say that I'm very proud about where I come from, Bonteville, Metric Station, two siblings, friends and neighbors surviving hardships together dependence on the public health system and, um, and of course growing up in the apartheid era with, um, with often limited um, opportunities, but um, as we all know, it takes a village. Um, yeah, and, and I thought that this, this picture in the slide was um, opportune, showing you the, the trains that we used to travel in um, over those years. And um, yeah, fortunately, uh, the seed for nursing um, had been planted by my aunt who now lives in the UK. And I do believe that nursing was definitely in God's plan uh, for me to have the opportunity to care for the communities that I, that I grew up in. So um, the nursing journey, I thought I'll give you a little bit about the nursing journey. So there were years spent at the tertiary institution, at the primary healthcare platform, at Red Cross Hospital as well. And again, facing, I suppose the time at Hanover Park was where 
uh, faced the hardships or, and I worked with communities who faced the hardships that so many endured as a result of the inequities in our society. And I was so grateful for the opportunity to give back and to care for them. And while furthering postgraduate studies in the nursing field, um, I was exposed to um, postgraduate nurse training. And although I was very young at that time, the challenge to help grow fellow nurses was nothing short of an absolute privilege. Um, here is where I, it became evident that we all interpret things differently, um, that communication as I knew it was definitely not adequate and that perceptions become truths. And, and I suppose also something so important and the realization that emotional maturity was the turnkey um, in every engagement. So you're probably wondering what happened after that and how things transitioned, but the public health bug um, bit. And uh, there were years, after the years of being groomed as a nurse, as an educator, and as a woman. I vividly recall my initial exposure to the School of Public Health um, at the summer school at UWC way back in 2002. That's where the bug bit and my eyes and my mind opened to the understanding of public health systems as a whole and the desire to venture further into public health followed, which was automatically ignited by the desire to lead and also develop other leaders. And it also became evident to me and very clear to me that not all managers were necessarily leaders and, um, and that the opportunity presented to just sort of hone that for other leaders in the space. Then, um, well, the situation at that time was the journey was not smooth. Um, at the time, we were still operating in a very male, doctor-dominated environment. And as a nurse, I suppose, I always felt that I had to prove more, work harder. It remained a constant effort to prove that the planned innovation or the planned venture would add value or be worthwhile or make a difference in the health system. Um, but fortunately, later on, I was fortunate to work, um, to have been exposed to leaders who challenged me, challenged me to do more, to do better, and um, the day came when my supervisor, who um, became my mentor and ultimately the head of the department, told me that you, you don't have to prove yourself, you can, you can do this. You know, he also applied almost like a sink or swim phenomena, um, told me also that the day will come when all of these distractions and challenges that I was facing would become like water off a duck's back. I, of course, didn't believe him at that time, but the day did come. Uh, the day when keeping my eyes on the goal was more important than any ego, than any situation, than any doctor. And, um, and so the goal ultimately honed to a place of, it was to push the boundaries, push the boundaries until the difference was visible in those within my sphere of influence, not necessarily myself. So now many of you must be wondering why is she talking about influencing others? And why is she not talking about monitoring and evaluation and targets? So you see, the thing is this, when all we do is focus on the targets, we tend to neglect the investment on the human capital and the people who make this all happen for us. So many years then followed for me in the um, uh, policy development and the program management arena. Um, and in that space, it inevitably presented itself the opportunity to spark and to stimulate innovation. And through existing and new platforms, like um, some of you might recall the annual HEST Bosperat, uh, quarterly reviews, operational research platforms, individuals from across the platform were challenged. They were challenged to innovate. They were challenged to share best practices. And in so doing, build their confidence while all could learn from each other across the, these uh, provincial platforms that we, that we ensured what was in place could continue and what we could develop as well. So the intention to develop leaders grew and the investment in the people who need to understand that they are valued in the public sector service grew and in time, their passion for what they do also grew as we challenge them. We challenge them to know why they do what they do. And, um, and I suppose this was then followed by my time in the, um, in the Northern Tigerberg substructure, where I transitioned um, to be the director there. And, and in that space, I suppose I became even more intentional 
on developing teams of leaders. So whether it was a cleaner, a clerk, a pharmacist, it didn't matter. As long as they were given the opportunity to grow and to discover their true potential as leaders. So we embarked on various efforts with various collaborations in leadership development, improvement sciences, and also efficiency courses so that we could not just strive towards living the values of the department, but ultimately become more resilient. So now this also meant that in that time, holding their hand when needed. So like when we piloted the new community-oriented primary care model, and since it was new territory for the primary health care team, stepping in and holding that space until they were ready to take it on, ease what was necessary and needed to be done. And so in that space, we, we hold each other's hands, we learn together, we grow together, and we become more and more clear uh, about why, the why, why we do what we do. So um, I suppose, you know, where we are at this point in, 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 in globally, um, and we all know that the last 15 months have been difficult. Um, and I suppose, what has this meant to me? Um, it meant walking the road with, a, with an amazing team, with amazing teams. So not only talking, but walking alongside. The most amazing exec team in the Northern Tigerberg substructure that I worked with for most of the, of the first year in the pandemic, uh, the substructure office team, the operational teams, and it meant, it meant daily huddles to assess and evaluate where we were at in order to make rapid strategic decisions. And what helped was really being part of a leadership in the Western Cape government that values learning and that also created space for us um, for exactly that. It also meant being visible uh, during this time and, and even on a good Friday so that no one felt alone in that battle. And I recall how um, my primary health care manager um, on that good Friday, it was his birthday to top, <clears throat> to top it all off. And he and I spent most of that good Friday at one of our CHCs when a, st a staff member tested positive. And um, we spent most of the daily sorting out close contacts, arranging their quarantine accommodation, being able to reassure them um, because that's what we needed to do. And we needed to be there for our teams and we still need to be there for our teams because um, as, you, as you all know, I suppose government structures are very hierarchical, you know, and all these layers going up and all these layers coming down. And, and while COVID-19 is the battleground, it does call and it did call for the flattening of that structure so that we are visible and we connect throughout all levels. And I suppose one of the big lessons for me and what was really important in that time was consistent communication, um, ensuring and what we did was I uh, sent weekly emails to every person within the substructure who had an email address. I think we ended up on almost 400 people just taking the opportunity to reassure them, to thank them, to give them facts, no lies, only truths, be transparent, even the difficult information. And our slogan at that time was um, triumphant over fear and standing together in wisdom. And so, yeah, the fears were there and are there, yes. Um, but we have, to try, we have to triumph over that. All of this comes with the unknown. I recall um, during the early days of COVID, um, the first couple of months, I recall praying every day, and I still do, and say, Lord, please don't let any of my staff die. I'm not sure that I'll be able to handle it. And, and then one of our HR clerks in the substructure office contracted COVID-19 and dies. And at that time, you know, words fail. And all we could do was sit sit with the team in silence and allowing myself also in that space to be vulnerable with them through to the emotion that I was feeling and that we were all feeling and authentic to who we are. Um, we lost more staff and it was more than okay, I suppose, to be vulnerable with all of them. And then of course, um, what happened next was the vaccination program and in January, 2021, I was promoted to, to the, the post of the Chief Director of Emergency and Clinical Services Support. And so I had this thing in my head about, okay, here's another opportunity. Let's make a difference. Let's help in this new environment. And, and while being eager to invest in the space, the crisis and the need at hand was and is the COVID-19 vaccination program. And so I suppose the big thing is about being able to do what it takes along with the amazing teams of people that we work with for the greater public good 
for keeping the health system going, and most importantly, to do what it takes to save lives, irrespective of where I am positioned in the department, that's what's important. So what have I, as a leader, learned over all of these years? Um, without the people in the public health system and without helping them to be the best them that they can be, everything else will not achieve its intended purpose. It is such a blessing when you, when you get that graduation picture of a team member realizing that that firm talk and that encouragement actually worked. So well done, Malpurta, and, and so many others out there. And I suppose being very clear about why I do what I do and helping others understand and articulate why they do what they do is beyond crucial in the space. I've also learned that I've got to keep it simple. Why bombard these leaders, whoever they are, whether they're leaders in the cleaning space, in the gardening space, in the admin space, in the pharmacy space, why bombard those leaders with methodology that is complex and takes time out of their already busy schedules, but why not simplify things for them, stick to what matters and what makes the most difference? I suppose, bang for buck, you know, if there's minimal impact with maximal effort, then just don't do it. And I've also learned that one needs to understand that we all have different needs in understanding our task at hand because we are all wired differently. So we've got to be very clear about how we communicate and making that communication relevant to who we are communicating with. And I've also learned that making time for appreciation and acknowledgement cannot be underestimated. It is so important. Um, and I suppose another lesson for me was walking the road with a team and being present um, is just, in, it's, it's, it's imperative. And I suppose in closing, um, I'm clear about the fact that um, no one part of this health system is less important or more important than the other. Um, it's like a body. If we were all a bunch of toes, we would not be a pretty sight. So we have to believe and understand that we each fulfill a special and unique function in order to keep the health system surviving and thriving. Even in a pandemic, we can thrive. And, and I suppose this remains a journey for me because the journey is the destination. You see, I believe I will never arrive, but will continue to strive to make a difference in and for our teams so that the clients that we all serve can, can get the best care from the public health system that I choose to serve in. So I suppose just like that child in Bonteville that required a village, this adult is not an island. I need guidance from God. I need the love from my husband and children, my parents, my siblings, my friends, and I need the support from my mentors, leaders, colleagues, and other partners. And that is all needed for me. And, um, and that's it from me. So I thank you. Thanks so much, Junita. That was an amazing um, contribution and speech. Um, really, really important lessons. I must say that our decision um, to, uh, on the 2020 awardee actually precedes the, the pandemic, so precedes Junita's latest role. But you will all agree that we couldn't have chosen better. So as a school, we are incredibly proud of you as we're proud of the other awardees. Um, it's a real privilege to continue to work with you and to continue to work with your, your colleagues in the, in the Department of Health. I think it is a remarkable journey that is that, that you are all traveling, that you have opened the way for learning and working together across systems, across groupings, and that is something we all learn from and are inspired by, by every day. So thank you very, very much. Um, there is a little prophecy in, in, the, um, in the, the text messages that have been streaming in for you. So um, we will share that with you later, or you will be able to see it actually, but it, we will also um, save the chats and, and forward them to you. Um, I'm wondering, we, we, I mean, it is just after seven, we won't spend um, very much more time, but I'm wondering whether there are one or two people who maybe want to say something or ask Junita a question. Um, one of the problems that we have, and we continue to learn, 
um, in the technology of all of this is, is that apparently everybody who didn't register and then signed in with the link registered with my name. That's why I am represented multiple times. It's not my way usually. So I see one hand, but I have no idea who it is. So please unmute yourself and speak. Good evening. Um, Morris, hello. Junita, wow. Years of a true legacy. I mean, I've got years of experience with you. And that day of the 2nd of April, 2021, I had an incident after you spent the day at Delft and you managed to deal with a family I refer to you. You did not say it's Good Friday. You did not say, I don't have the time. You said, I will come back to you. And you did. The woman survived. And the family is ever grateful for the fact that you could have chosen to refer me, but you assisted. And for our friendship, I remember our talks in Mossel Bay, wherever we were together, our walks. So thank you for continuing in that tenacity of being a true leader and a woman leader in public health. Thank you. I salute you. Thanks so much, Damaris. Anybody else? <clears throat> All right, so then it, it um, what is just left for me is, no, there's one more, Uta Lehmann, please. <laughs> um, and then I'll ask Keith as well. Uh, Keith? Would you like to speak? Thank you very much, um, Uta. I'm sitting with a, a lump in my throat, listening to Juanita. Um, Juanita has come a long way in our department. Um, and um, today I, I, I'm, I'm very privileged to have said that I've spent many of these, of her years um, together with her, working in some or other capacity with her. Um, Juanita, um, all I can say to you on this day, um, our department are, I mean, we, we are extremely fortunate to have somebody of your caliber to be a senior manager. Um, I've always said to you, you are a role model and you will be a trailblazer. Um, you are a trailblazer. You are a role model to all of us and the sky is the limit for you. And it's for two really, really important reasons. The one is that you are true to yourself as an absolutely selfless person in service of others. I've not probably in my life worked with somebody that's more pure in their intentions of understanding why it is that they do what, why they, what they do and why it is they do it. So you're an absolute example of somebody that is connected with a true purpose. Um, the second thing is that you are probably the most authentic leader that I've had the privilege of working with. Um, people naturally are attracted to you. People naturally um, want to be led by you. And those qualities make you an exceptional person. So I am truly humbled um, to be associated with you. I know I speak on behalf of many people in our department. They are truly inspired and privileged to be associated with you. You make us all extremely proud. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the head of health uh, in the Western Cape uh, Department of Health. I mean, firstly, thank, thank you very much for the role you are playing. And my understanding is that you had a hand in mentoring Janita as well. I believe that you were the one who said to her, you sink or swim, you make it, make it happen. And didn't she swim? So um, yes, I, I agree. I think the sky's the limit and um, it, it is amazing. It's also amazing to see all the wonderful messages coming through. So thank you very much. All right. Um, so I want to thank particular uh, Janita, of course, for a, a, a beautiful video and, and a wonderful speech. And I also want to thank Leanne Brady, who at fairly short notice, Leanne and her colleagues who who did the video on Janita, I think, which, which I think captured her beautifully. 
I again want to thank the team from the School of Public Health, who once again organized a great and even this year be different event. We still have to figure out some of the logistics of these things. I gather that the, the video on, on Jake's actually didn't play and it only, only the audio played, which um, is, is a great pity. We will try and insert it into the recording so that it is available. Um, I have no idea why that happened. Um, but that was entirely my fault, not, not the team's fault. They organized a beautiful event. Um, I want to thank this, this year, particularly Tamlin Peterson and uh, Zianda Mwanda, who took care of all the, the virtual logistics today and also the invitations and so on. And then I want to thank all of you for making the time, um, for being here this evening, um, for sending messages of congratulations to Janita. Um, and just want to say, please look after yourselves, stay safe. Um, think of all the people who have it a lot harder than we do. Um, stay warm. And um, we'll hope to, we hope to see you for a second event. We will have our the annual David Sanders lecture in August sometime. And then we'll have the 2021 Jake Selville Award in, in uh, September. So we hope to see you for those and other events at the school and at UWC. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and good night. Good night. Bye everyone.